Okay, welcome back to Double Award Physics. This episode is about domestic electricity. Okay, so that's about electricity basically in the house. We're going to start with the wiring of the standard three-pin plug. All right, so three-pin plug that you plug into your wall. Um, this episode is going to be about you know, what that's about. Why has it got three bits to it? How do you wire it? What are the parts inside it? And what are they used for? Okay, so uh, you need to be able to reproduce this diagram. Uh, you'll never be asked to draw it, but you will be asked to label it. So you absolutely have to know all of these labels. You need to know cable grip, fuse, live wire, earth wire, neutral wire. Okay, uh, you need to know the colors of them, and uh, you need to know what their purpose is. Okay, so we're basically just going to spend a little bit of time running through this. You get three wires uh, and a three-pin plug. Each one of them is connected to one of the little kind of brass pins that go into the wall uh, outside it. Okay, so uh, inside every single piece of cabling that comes from an extension lead or from your Xbox or whatever, there's uh, there's wires inside it. Okay, so it's just kind of it's a grouping of wires together. All right, now there are two wires: the live wire and the neutral wire are the important ones for actually making it work. The live wire uh, carries carries the voltage into the appliance, basically. All right, not entirely true, but, but pretty much true. It it's it's got a high voltage wire, so it's a high voltage wire. Uh, and it travels through the f uh, and goes to the fuse. It is brown. All right, brown, lovely brown color. Um, don't know why they chose brown. It sucks, but what can you do? The neutral wire. Bit of a misleading name, um, but it has no voltage on it. It's the wire that goes out of the appliance. That once you've sent all your voltage in and it's been used up by your piece of equipment, your Xbox, your hair straighteners, um, you know whatever it is you have to be using this part, uh, the voltage gets used up, and then the electrons travel out with no voltage left out of your neutral wire to go back and be part of the grid again. Okay, so no voltage wire, um, and it is it um, it doesn't have fuse, nothing really particularly special about it, and it is blue, little baby blue. And then finally you have the earth wire. And it has no purpose other than for safety. Uh, you can actually operate plenty of appliances without an earth wire. Um, it just means that if something goes wrong, then you've got no you get limited protection. Okay, so the earth wire is for safety. It has no voltage either. Ideally, okay, that if there's voltage going down your earth wire, there's a problem. Alright, so for safety, there's no voltage on it. And uh, it is uh, yellow and green stripes. Yellow and green stripes. Okay, so um, best way to remember that, well, it's not the best way to remember that, but a way to remember it is the live brown cow stands on the yellow green earth under the neutral blue sky. Please don't laugh at me. I didn't make it up. But it works. It's one of those things that it's, it's sufficiently terrible, but it works. Okay, little little memory for you. So remember, a live brown cow stands on the yellow green earth under the neutral blue sky, and you're in business. Okay, the cable grip here, uh, at this point, does exactly what it says in the tin. It grips the cable. Obvious. Uh, it stops it from slight from falling out. These little screw bits in here keep the top they keep the top ends of the live neutral and earth wires in place. And this thing here, the fuse, this is what it's all about. Okay, the fuse. Now we did a bit of wire theory, um, so we understand what wires do and what they're about. Um, a fuse is a thin piece of wire that melts at a certain current. Okay, so for example, a 3 amp fuse melts above 3 amps. All right, so if I have an appliance that's designed to work at 2 amps, I put a 3 amp fuse in it, and it works fine. Everything's great. Uh, but one day my appliance, you know, ha has a has a head stagger. Something goes wrong inside it, and um, you know the the circuit gets messed up, and it tries to draw 10 amps. Right, and you're like, oh my god, it's going to kill you. But the 3 amp fuse goes, no, oh, 10 amps. No, no, I'm not having any of that. It melts. Uh, it breaks the circuit, and you tr you try to turn it on, and it doesn't work. You're like, oh, I'm raging. Oh, Dad, help me out. It doesn't work. But you're not dead. Okay, so fuses stop you being dead. That's that's their general purpose. If something goes wrong, 
tries to draw too big a current, fuse melts. So if the appliance tries to draw, that's kind of the keyword. Um, too big a current, it melts and breaks the circuit. And all you have to do is figure out what's wrong with your appliance, fix it, stick a new fuse in, and bang, you're good to go. Okay, and that's uh, that's the plug. No great difficulties with that. The great thing about this is that if I know what mains voltage is, and I know what the power rating on my appliance is, I can work out what my fuse is. And this is almost certainly an exam question every year. Every year. So, for example, I have, let's, let's do an example. I have an appliance connected to 230 volts of electricity. Right. Uh, it has a power rating of let's say um, doo -doo 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 -doo, let's say 1.2 kilowatts. Right. What fuse should I use? Okay, no. Um, so all you do is you go right. Well, I know the power. The P is equal to 1,200. I know the voltage, which is equal to 230, and I know that fuses are measured in amps, so that's bound to be a current. Right, so from our last video, uh, if P equals IV, then I equals P divided by V. So I equals the power, which is 1200, divided by 230. So let's go for I equals, and let's get our calculator out, and we do 1200 divided by 230. And that gets me 5.2. Okay, 5.2 amps. So my answer is that I need a 5.2 amp fuse. Unfortunately, they don't make 5.2 amp fuses. All right, you kind of get them in one amp, maybe not very often. Three amps, five amps, uh, the occasional seven amp, and 13 amps. All right, those are your options: one, three, five, seven, thirteen. Beyond that, you need specialist gear. Okay, so um, what are you thinking? I think I can get the closest one, 5 amps. But remember, your fuse busts at 5 amps. And if you're designed to normally take 5.2 amps, you've got to plug it in. First time you use it, bang, it's dead. Okay, so you use the next one up, and you use 7 amps. So answer is that I should use, use a 7 amp fuse. Now, you need to know that 1, 3, 5, 7, and 13 are your fuse options. Right? You also need to know that if this had turned out to be um, something like 4, let's say it was 4.9 amps, that I would still use a 7 amp fuse. Because um, if, it, if it pulled 5 amps at all, this breaks. Right? And 4.9 is far too close to 5 amps. Um, remember, electricity, not exactly 100% reliable at definite currents. So, uh, you know. If it just drew a tiny bit extra, it'll bust your circuit. So you'll be forever replacing fuses. You want seven amp fuse. That way, if it if it melts a seven amp fuse, there's definitely something wrong there. As opposed to you know it maybe just had a wee bit of extra moisture in it or something. Okay, that's fuses. That's the three pin plug, and uh, that's us for this lesson. Uh, next time we'll do paying for electricity, and that'll be it for this series.